This is the Karcher K2 and this is the new Nilfisk Core 125. Now both of these machines come in at under £100 and both have similar spec, but I need to know which is best. Today I'm putting these two pressure washers to the test and I want to see which is the best option for those of you who are on a budget. So if you want to stick around till the very end of the video, I will be crowning one of these machines the ultimate compact champion of 2021. So first things first, let's take a look at the Core 125 and see exactly what you're getting for your money. Well, for £90, you're getting a 5 metre hose, a 5 metre electric cable and two nozzles, one which is ideal for your general cleaning and the other one is perfect for patio cleaning. It's even got a quick release to make life a lot easier too. You also get a chemical bottle which isn't to be confused with a snow foam cannon, but most importantly, this machine comes with an aluminium pump, which means it could potentially have better reliability than your average domestic pressure washer. So Neil Fisk have really thought outside of the box and they've been so clever. Now this is something that Karcher have not done and they still can't do. And what that is, is this hose reel can easily be rolled up and you can put it in here. Everything's got its own storage compartment. Even the nozzles that go on the end, they simply clip in, clip out, and there's even a little holder for your snow foam lance or your chemical lance. It is so fantastic. Everything has been thought out perfectly. And for a machine this small, it's unbelievable. And take the Lance for example, this is absolutely perfect. It's so solidly built, doesn't feel cheap either. Everything feels nice and solid, nice and tight, and you feel like you can trust it. This is a match made in heaven. As long as it performs well, I think we're on to a winner. Moving on to the Karcher K2 now, and in this video, you'll see there are many different shapes and sizes of this machine. You've got the standard K2, you've got the compact and you've got the classic, all of which have exactly the same components inside. So essentially you're buying the same machine with a different body. So as you may have saw in a previous video, I have already done a full review on the Karcher K2. And I'll be honest, I was a little brutal, but with good reason. The machine was so light, but it kept falling over and the hose that they supplied you was ridiculously short. So first of all, let's have a look at the Lance and this Gosh, you know what? This feels like the sort of thing that you get in a Happy Meal at McDonald's. It doesn't feel very strong at all and it has got a quick release, but it doesn't feel that quick and easy to use. Whereas the Nilfisk, you just pull it and it comes out and it's pretty secure. But for this, I'm still not sure. But anyway, I want to give it another crack and I want to see how it's going to compete against a similar machine in a similar price bracket. So for round one, the build quality and design point goes to Nilfisk. Moving on to round two, we will be seeing which machines work when connected to a water tank. And in my test, both machines managed to draw water from the tank out of my van, but make sure the pressure washer is lower than the tank itself. So basically let gravity force the water down into the pressure washer if you want to get the best results. So for round two, each machine gets a point, taking it to 2-1. Moving on to round three now, and we're going to be talking all about the price. First up is the Nilfisk, which cost £89.99 £99 from cleanstore.co.uk. Now that is a very tasty price when you look at what you're getting for your money. And I know the website looks a tad dated, but in fact it is a very good place to get affordable pressure washers. And so far to this date, this is the cheapest price for this model right now. So we previously established that the Karcher has many different variations of this machine. So you can get a much better deal and prices can start from as little as £69. Alternatively, if you want to get one which has been refurbished from Karcher Outlet, you can get them for as little as £49. So when it comes to pricing, the clear winner goes to Karcher and that takes the score back to 2-2. It's time to test their very own snow foam cannons and I've already made a full review on the Karcher snow foam cannon which I'll put a link in the description below. And in testing I was really disappointed with the weakness of the foam. Even using different dilution rates I just wasn't getting the foam I wanted with the FJ6. But then I turned to the Nilfisk and I wasn't exactly feeling positive about that one either. And both foam cannons simply weren't getting the right consistency. 
So I tried out the MJJC version 2 with a thicker mix of snow foam and as you can see the difference between the cannons is night and day. But the MJJC, like the others, used way too much chemical from a bottle and it ran out far too quickly and thicker foam doesn't always mean better either. So then I tried the new MTM PF22 aka the best snow foam cannon in the world to see if even with the basic machines I could get a nice consistent layer of foam and I got a good happy medium, not too thick, not too thin and it was a lovely blanket of foam. But the brutal truth for their own branded snow foam cannons was clear to me. I couldn't pick a winner as they were both so bad, so the score stays the same. For the next round we need to know which one has the best hose. So in my left hand I've got the Neil Fisk hose, in my right hand I've got the Karch one and instantly you can tell the difference, the Karch one is incredibly stiff and one of the massive problems and one of the complaints that they still haven't addressed is the fact that it always coils up. So what happens is when you're cleaning your car or your patio, you try and unwind it, you pull it and then the machine falls over. Neil Fisk have gone one better, they have corrected that. You don't even get any twists or anything, you actually have a nice solid hose, it's very flexible and even when it's got a lot of pressure it just doesn't coil up at all. So it's definitely going to be an extra point for the Neil Fisk. So Neil Fisk have easily earned themselves another point. So I've had both of these machines now for the past two weeks and I can honestly say the Neil Fisk one, hands down, every single time I used it, I was just like, wow, this is actually a pretty good machine. Now look, both of these machines are incredibly underpowered, but you're not paying a lot of money. At the end of the day, both of these are gonna cost less than 100 quid. So I don't know what you'd really expect from a machine with that sort of price tag. But at the end of the day, it's the little things, it's the little details I love about it. Just the way that everything can be folded up, can be put away, you can put it out the way in the shed and you know that next time you get it out and plug it in, it's going to work. And as for the Karcher, you don't need me to tell you that these machines have a horrendous reliability record. You just check out on the forums and what people commented. There is so much hate and negativity towards the machine. It is luck of the draw, but to be fair, the one that I've been using in these videos has actually been fine. It's actually been working okay. And if I was to part with my money and I had to buy just one of these machines, the Neil Fisk is going to win, hands down. It was just in a class of its own. And if you want to see more pressure washer videos, I have a dedicated playlist all about my reviews and I also cover different electrical equipment within the valeting and detailing industry. So do make sure you check it out. I'll also put a link to that playlist in the description below. As for me, I'm going to love you and leave you because I'm back with a brand new video in the middle of the week. And I'll see you later. Bye bye.